Hello Biotechnicals. This is Dr. Farhan Zameer from Biotechnica, Bangalore. From a long time, most of our students and our internees, they were requesting for a demonstration of a particular tool and this tool is called as Chop Chop. Okay, and what is this Chop 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 Chop? Let's try to look into it. So we will go into the direct demonstration. So we'll start the video. Welcome back. So for today, we will look into a complete hands-on demonstration of how do I use a tool which is called as Chop Chop. Now, please remember to know what exactly is Chop Chop. You know, Chop Chop is a, 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 a hands-on tool which has been used for designing primers, especially for the guide RNA, which is used in CRISPR. Now, anybody, now everybody has in, uh, a lot of applications of CRISPR in their research. Now, you know, with this particular demonstration, let me try to show you how exactly Chop Chop could be used as an effective tool for designing your primers. So for this, what we need to do is just go on to Google and type in Chop Chop. It is C-O-C-H-O-P, C-H-O-P, and then you say enter. So the moment you say enter, you would go on to chopchop.c bu.uib.no and the moment you click on it so this is the home page of chop chop so now for a better understanding let me try to knit the story now the story is uh, say for example i am trying to use crispr in cancer research and here i want to knock out a gene um, and see how exactly a particular cell line would work especially take let me take up a gene maybe like called as you know bcl2 now, what is this BCL2? If you are unaware of uh, BCL2 and it is coming up in a kick pathway, it is very, very simple because now you are sitting in front of a biggest resource that is your web. So you need to just go on, you will take another tab and click on BCL2. Okay, so when you in Google, if you type in BCL2, you will get an information of what is this BCL2 and how exactly BCL2 is uh, taking part or what is its role in cancer research. So I, I see over here saying that BCL2 is a gene and this gene is encoding in humans and uh, especially it is a founding member of a BCL family which is mainly a regulatory protein which regulates cell death and also it is either involved in inhibiting or inducing apoptosis. So this is how I know about the background of that particular gene. So now I have known what exactly is BCL2. Now with that, I think that can I see, uh, uh, can, can I consider BCL2 as one of the gene fragment so that can I either knock out or you know using CRISPR-A that is CRISPR activation technology or CRISPR interference technology can i can i play around it so let's see how exactly we we move forward so once i have identified the gene of interest which we call it as the goi so i go on to a tool which is called as chop chop now what is this chop chop again if i am unaware of it so i have an option about okay so if i go on to the tab as about now it says this chop chop right now we have version 3 and it is a web based tool which is very much helpful in selecting target sites for crispr cas9 technology not just for crispr for various you know variants of crispr you can use this chop chop now i do not want to waste up a lot of time reading up on uh, what exactly is chop chop i request you people to go and read the available literature which is beautifully published in nucleic acid research uh, by the by the you know the people who have actually designed it and now directly let me show you how exactly you can use chop chop as an online application so what we have decided is we now know that uh, i need to consider bcl2 gene so i'll go on to chop chop and type in bcl2 okay so uh, on to the target uh, since i want to look into uh, a specific target and in my case the target is bcl2 now the database will ask you like which is an organism you want to really look into now you know since i have a huge amount of organisms over here but on the way i take the most recent human uh, genome which has been you know synthesized and it has been deposited there so you have the human genome data which i am considering as hg38 
the whole genome that is chromosomal completely, you know, CH thirty eight uh, version. And then it is asking me which version of CRISPR do you want to use. There are, as I told you, there are multiple variants of CRISPR. And for the convenience of our viewers, I am trying to tell you that we will consider CRISPR Cas9 as the the usage uh, kit. Now, apart from that, the tool, the Chop Chop, is again asking me like, what exactly are your options? Okay, do you want to have a knockout system? Do you want to have a knock-in system? Or are you going for activation or repression? Or are you going for nanopore uh, enrichment? Now, since I told you that I want to knock out BCL2, so I will take up the first option that is knockout. Now, with this, you can directly go and you know click on you know, find target sites. But if you do not want to do it on a default mode, you can also go on customization. And for the customization process, you have an option, a tab over here, which is called as options. So I click on options. Now you have a series of systems which will open up, which will give you a lot of app options of what exactly is a particular site you're looking for. So it could be a PAM site or what should be the length of your guide RNA. Um, and that is with PAM site, without PAM, PAM site, what should be your efficiency score, what should be your repair profile, uh, all these details and what is the requirement at the five prime end and very importantly, whether there is self complementarity. So you can check on what exactly is your requirement depending on your research design. Now, I would say that, you know, on a default mode, I am running on it and then I go here at the bottom and then I say find target sites. So when I say find target sites, it will take few seconds to minutes. Now, if you are not in a queue, you are directly given the result. But if you are in a queue, it will tell you that, you know, wait for 10 seconds or 20 seconds or a minute. So wait patiently. Please do not click multiple times on, you know, find targets because that will every time you click, it will rerun the entire process. So now, this is giving me the best ranked, 17 best ranked data on BCL2 target gene. And this is what is the target gene over here. And it says that AAA, uh, GC, GC, and you know, you have the entire sequence. So then it also tells me what is the genome location of it, and then whether it is on a plus strand or on a negative strand, and then what is the GC content of it, and then a uh, good news is whether I have self-complementarity or not. And right now it says it is zero, which is great. And look at the efficiency. The look the efficiency is around 50%. It is still okay, but on the other way, I would have been very happy if it is much more higher. Now, imagining that that this is my requirement, what I do is I have now identified the target sequence and this is my target sequence. So uh, please remember, I can just copy that uh, target sequence or if I just click on it, the entire target sequence actually opens in a new window and this new window is only dedicated towards the design of your primers. Now onto this new window, you can see what is the number of exons you know, where exactly do you have the intron? What exactly is your target? And very importantly, where do you have the various restriction sites? And where exactly your primer can amplify your target uh, uh, sequence? So with this, you have uh, the options over here. You say that this is this is the uh, the actual uh, the primer which is actually you know uh, trying to anneal your uh, target sequence. And then for for as a primer, once you have your target or once you have the template, you need to have uh, the the reverse and the forward primers. Now, how do I select the reverse and forward primers for a particular target? To find this, you have a beautiful option just below this particular table. So you have you know, you have the left primer and then you have the right primer. So it says exactly what exactly are the coordinates. And then you have the left primer, which is which is around of a TM of 60. And you have a right primer, which is of a TM of 60.9, which is a great news because it is uh, it will enable me to set up a one step PCR and then try to validate my uh, entire target uh, sequence. And also it is trying to tell you know, there are no, uh, you know, off targets, which is a good news. 
and then there is no pair of or off targets that is also a great news and then it is also trying to tell us that what would be the approximate product size the amplicon size over here if i consider this as a primer this is around 280 now once i amplify it and when i run an electrophoretic gel so approximately this particular target sequence will get amplified as an amplicon i'll get a product size of 280 so, you know, this is within the limit and this is how you can actually design um, a, a primer for your target sequence in CRISPR. Okay, hopefully this particular video is helpful for you and this comes very handy and we request you to actually uh, play around it so that you will understand it in a much better way. And now we at Biotechnica, we organize multiple internships so that we give you hands-on training on the various uh, updated technologies so that if you upgrade, you are able to implement all the freeware which is already available on the database so that you can actually generate your research work or you, you can actually write a review paper or you can write a book chapter. So all these things can be enabled by learning with the free tools and this has been enabled, this has been facilitated by Biotechnica and Rasaynica. So please do join for various other internships which have been organized and many a times you get the updates with your LinkedIn uh, or Telegram or on YouTube. So just make sure you stay connected and subscribe our channel. So many a times when we get connected, it is we learn hands-on and when we learn hands-on, we are able to implement it in our research. So with this, I take a leave. So hopefully uh, this particular video is much more helpful for you. Beyond this, if you have any clarifications, please leave a comment in the comment box so that we will answer all your queries and uh, we will try to do uh, as best as uh, we could. And also remember, together we can make a difference in bioinformatics. So all the very best. Take care. Goodbye.